All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obeisance channel. This is episode six of A Noob's Guide to Hyperland. This is my attempt to bridge the gap between power users and new users alike. Hyperland is an advanced uh, ecosystem on Linux systems, and it's more or less developed by power users for power users. Therefore, much of the documentation is not really written with the new user in mind or consideration. It's kind of more or less written with the assumption that you know what you're doing, which is great for power users like myself, but it's really inconvenient for someone that wants to use software that they admire, that they appreciate, but it's incredibly intimidating when you go to a document and they just kind of assume that you know what you're doing. So this is my attempt to fix that because I have a 14 year old that's trying to learn Hyperland. And I couldn't get him to study into the documentation for obvious reasons. And so here I am recording these videos in hopes to not only educate him, but educate you. So if you find these videos useful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Let me and my son know I'm not as dumb as I look sometimes. And uh, yeah, with any luck, you'll learn something. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive into input rules. If you want to follow along in a one to one ratio, you can download my dot files from the link description below. If you choose to do so, I definitely recommend you follow from the beginning of this guide because uh, there are a few modifications you need to make to my dot files to make it compatible with your system, and I walk you through step by step on how to do so. So let's get into this. Uh, input rules. The noob note input device configuration in Hyperland. This section allows you to customize your keyboard, mouse, and touchpad settings as well as any other peripherals to be real. Uh, you can adjust the layout, sensitivity, and behavior of your input devices to suit your personal preferences. It also supports advanced configurations such as per device settings and laptop specific gestures. Tip, most users can stick with the default settings here. If you have specific input preferences, example for gaming, mouse, or touchpad gestures, this is the section that gives you the flexibility to customize your devices. So for more details, go ahead and check out the Hyperland Wiki. Um, by default, if you're in the U.S., most of this is probably going to be just fine. If you use a, a you know U.S. layout or whatever, it's going to be perfectly fine. But uh, only you are going to know the values that you're going to need to change here. All of these are left blank except for a few. Change your keyboard layout here. Uh, if you want to follow the mouse, uh, enable or disable mouse following feature as well as sensitivity. Uh, touchpad functionality if you need it um, down here below. And again, I've got everything's commented, so hopefully uh, we're just grazing through this because there's not much to it. Um, example of per device input configuration for specific devices. This allows per device sensitivity adjustments for individual input devices. Um, so, for example, my mouse, Epic Mouse V1, specify device name, sensitivity. And there you are. So laptop gestures, if you want workspace swipe, you would enable this to true, and that will enable swipe. Uh, so there's not much to it. There's not much more I know how to explain here. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next important part that is pretty critical. And you guys are going to like this one because it covers your environment variables. So this is how you do your theming, more or less the traditional way. Um, but for the sake of new users, if you want, you can open a terminal and clear it. And then you're going to go uh, install with uh, sudo pacman dash capital S N W G dash look. And when you press enter, that'll install NWG look, which when you open your Rofi menu with alt space, if you're following my configuration, you can type NWG and it will bring up GTK settings where you can press enter. And if you have installed any themes, they will appear here. If you don't know how to apply themes, you would go to something like gnomelook.com. You would download your uh, GTK or QT themes and uh, your mouse themes and your icon themes and you would extract them to dot icons for icons and mouse themes and you would extract themes to dot themes right here so you can see if we go in here we've got my krypton so that is how you install your themes and then we will return here to the var variables um, i will note that there is a bug that i've noticed i don't know if it's a bug or if it's a configuration conflict that i have but i did notice that when i use nwg uh, look to address my theming it obviously works i mean it set my my krypton theme and everything i've got my icon themes everything's good to go my mouse cursor i'm still tinkering with mice but i digress let's say i wanted to change my icon 
theme, right? I would go to Breeze Dark or go back to Breeze Gray. As soon as I click Apply, you can see it created a default folder. But if I were to try opening Vivaldi right now, it would crash. If I tried opening Steam, it would crash. And it took me days to figure out what in the hell is going on. Why, are, why is all my shit crashing all of a sudden? And by a whim, I happened to notice this default folder and I looked at it and I looked at the index. And I was like, okay, that's, that's weird. Um, it doesn't look like it should be conflicting with anything. But lo and behold, if you yeet us, delete us, that default folder set by NWG look, all of the sudden Vivaldi launches, Steam launches, Signal launches, Spotify launches. So if you're having issues with applications launching, it's that goddamn default folder that gets created in the um, dot icons uh, directory. So anyway, moving on to environments. I'm going to kind of graze over this. I'm going to cover each and every portion. A lot of it's got to do with NVIDIA builds, but it's going to be relevant to a lot of people in some regards. So the noob note, environment. Environment variables optimize system behavior for performance, appearance, and compatibility. They're useful for tweaking the environment for Wayland, Electron apps, QT, and GTK themes, etc. Most users won't need to modify these unless they are specifically advised. That's not entirely accurate. I didn't really know what I was talking about because I didn't realize that that, wait a minute, I'm going to be setting my cursors, I'm going to be setting my icons, and that sort of thing. So um, this is where it gets in a gray area for me because I am, as I've stated in previous videos, I'm still learning myself, guys. I'm still learning this. I'm just, I've been using Linux long enough. It's kind of natural to me to kind of learn and navigate through these things, but that doesn't mean I understand all of it. So if I happen to mislabel something or misrepresent something, don't get mad, just correct me down below. So, moving on. Environment variables. We set XDG session type to Wayland, which forces Wayland as the display server. Uh, we also enable auto hinting for Electron apps on Wayland with Electron Ozone platform hint set to auto. Uh, for NVIDIA users, we've got NVIDIA GPU configuration for OpenGL and video, excuse me, video acceleration. Enable hardware, excuse me, good Lord. Enable hardware acceleration for video decoding and OpenGL rendering on NVIDIA GPUs. So we enable VA API for NVIDIA hardware video acceleration through Libva driver name NVIDIA. Uh, use NVIDIA's GLX for OpenGL. We have GLX vendor library name set to NVIDIA. Uh, enable NVIDIA DRM backend for direct rendering. GDM background, or excuse me, GBM backend equals uh, NVIDIA DRM. Uh, explicitly use NVIDIA renderer by setting a renderer to NVIDIA. And then we've got the NVD backend set to direct. Uh, OpenGL optimization for NVIDIA, uh, optional. Enable threaded optimizations for OpenGL for better performance. So enable OpenGL threaded optimization. Uh, GL threaded optimizations equals 1. Uh, cursor settings. So X cursor size 24. Cursor equals colloid cursors. Keep in mind that if you're setting these themes manually in here for hopefully attaining persistence, something I'm still working on myself, make sure that these are case sensitive. So whatever your theme is actually out, it is going to be curse, uh, excuse me, case sensitive. Uh, GTK and application theme settings for consistency and better aesthetics. So GTK theme, you set that here. You see I've got mine set to Krypton. GTK icon theme is set to Cora Gray. And GTK backend is set to Wayland. Uh, QT platform settings, the so QT QPA platform equals Wayland XCB. This uses both Wayland and XCB plugins for QT. You enable automatic scaling for QT apps with QT auto scale, excuse me, QT auto screen scale factor equals one. And you disable QT window decorations under Wayland with QT Wayland disable window decorations equal one. Optional software rendering for Wayland compositors is WLR renderer allow software zero, disable software rendering for Wayland, use hardware acceleration. Uh, disabling unnecessary effects for performance. So if you happen to be noticing that things are not performing up to snuff, then you might want to consider this. Disable window animations for improved performance in the Hyperland. Hyperland disable animations equals true or false. Um, last but not least, we got cursor behavior. This is uh, in here by default, and we've got ensure no hardware cursor is used. Cursor, no hardware cursor equals true or false. Enforce software rendered cursors across all apps. 
So I hope this breaks down environment variables. Uh, if you are familiar with theming, you know what to do. If you're not familiar, go ahead and go back to the beginning of the video and kind of explain how to install themes. If you would like a more elaborate explanation as to how to install themes, I will gladly make one. But for now, we're just going to stick to Hyperland configuration. So look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. If you like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns and corrections. And uh, if you like the videos, consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. If you really like the videos, hit that notification bell so that you get notified with the new drops. All right. Take care, y'all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. God bless.